Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. And I have a very special invitation for you. What are you doing this September? In fact, September 15th through 17th, would you be willing to fly or drive to Scottsdale, Arizona in the USA, September 15th through 17th, there is an afterlife research and education symposium. And you're going to meet some of the top experts in the field of afterlife studies, people discussing how to communicate with our loved ones. And I'm talking the cutting edge individuals are there. If you love Craig Hogan, Roberta Grimes, Wendy and Victor Zamet, me, Sandra Champlain, and a whole host of others, I invite you to go to the website Afterlife Study org to check it out and to register if you feel that's appropriate. And also, we have a Facebook group now. Where can you meet like-minded people that you can really share from your heart about life after death and these things that we're learning? Well, Facebook. If you go to the search box on Facebook and you type in We Don't Die Listeners, I have a very private community. Uh, we keep it private. Your loved ones aren't going to know what you're doing in there, but it's a good place to just be free to be you. So now on to the show. Coming to us from Australia, I have the beautiful, wonderful, warming, heartwarming lady named Christine Morgan. Christine Morgan is one of Australia's foremost spiritual mediums and teachers based in Sydney, Australia. She has worked for 23 years in the field of spiritual mediumship and the intuitive arts throughout Australia, as well as internationally, including the USA, Canada, Europe, and England. Christine is a certificate holder of the Spiritualist National Union in public speaking and demonstrating evidential mediumship. CSNU. In fact, she is the only accredited medium in Australia. She's also a tutor at the prestigious Arthur Finley College in the UK. And although Christine is in very high demand around the world as a medium and teacher, she still makes time for her private consultations. Her website is christinemorgan.com.au. So, Christine Morgan, a, well, a warm welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Thank you. Good morning, Sandra. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. Morning for you, night for me, but that's the magic of <laughs> Skype. We're halfway around Ladies. the world from each other. I love it. I love that. And I got tongue tied in my introduction of you just because I'm ex so excited. I was just at Arthur Finley College and I looked up at the wall that's got all the pictures of the tutors and there you were smiling and just to know that you, you make such a global difference. I thought I'm honored oh. to be able to talk to you today. Thank you. It's a delight. Thank you. Yeah, let's talk, Christine, a little bit about yourself. Um, how did you get into the world of mediumship? I mean, is this something you were born into? You were doing something else, and then this <laughs> came through. Tell us a little bit about your story. Okay, well, I actually come from a family of mediums and wow. uh, psychic. So um, on my mother's side, my grandmother, you know, always read tea leaves, read the flames in the fire, pyromancy, read jewelry. Um, so my mother and her sisters grew up in that family of psychic awareness, um, often talking about dreams and symbols and signs, etc. And her father, my grandfather, also worked a little bit with mediumship. And then mum married my dad and he was a medium. Wow. And so he was working with mediumship um, from the age of about 22. He's now passed to the spirit world, but he was very well known in the UK and a very... Um, highly acclaimed, well-known medium for running a, a wonderful spiritualist church, a very good teacher. And um, it was basically on both sides of my family then. So to be truthful, I was a reluctant medium. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to talk to the dead. <laughs> I, thought that's what, I, I thought that's what old people did. So generally when I used to go to, my parents divorced, and when I used to go to the UK to visit my father every year, I went around while he visited spiritualist services I got introduced to spiritualism, I met lots of people and I watched mediums work. I always sat at the back and I can guarantee nine times out of ten someone would come and say, you know, you will be on this platform one day, young lady, and you'll be doing this. And I've been saying, no, 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 because my background was in uh, the beauty, fashion and hair industry. Oh. So um, I was running a, a chain of hair and beauty salons. 
So I was very much into a different world than talking to the dead and reading teacups or learning about psychic sciences. Right. However, as time went on, through my teens, I had very strong experiences that were undeniably of a, a psychic phenomena. Um, my mother told me, I didn't have imaginary friends, Sandra, like many mediums will say. I didn't have anything like that, didn't recall that. But my mother would say I was very, very perceptive. And I would come out and say things and people would look at me and think, how did you know that? You know, as a child, I was just very perceptive. So mm -hmm. to be honest with you, I think being in both sides of the family, my brother was also a medium. Um, it's in my blood. And so I think I think that I was destined to develop that ability. Um, and experiences happened where it got to the stage where I really had to do something about it because it was happening more and more. I was seeing people, hearing things, I knew things. So I needed to go and find out more. And luckily, I had the guidance of my father. And then I went back and forwards to do lots of study at the Arthur Finney College to understand what was happening to me. And then I'd come back to Australia and practice what I'd learned and sit with it. And I learned to develop a very strong bond and relationship with the spirit world. And the rest is history. <laughs> it just flew from there. My life changed. I moved away from the business side of the, the hair and beauty industry. Um, I had more demand for private sessions. I eventually started teaching. And then I was invited to do um, a teacher training course at the Arthur Finney College. And it went through, went really just through there, it was a natural path for me, but it wasn't, wasn't an easy pathway, I want to say that. It wasn't an easy pathway up because I do think that we're constantly developing and unfolding and sometimes, you know, your path goes in a different pathway and you have to think, do I really want to do this? What is this about? What is happening to me? But the more I learned, the more I studied, the more I understood and the closer I became with the spirit world, my life became enriched, and I knew it was something that my soul couldn't leave alone. Oh, that's and here, fantastic. I hear I am today. Christine, what kind of things would happen to you that you finally said, okay, I've got to learn this? I mean, were you seeing um, spirits in the well, store? I, I mean, what kind of things? Because okay. we're all looking for good reason to believe in life after death, and um, stories do. are fantastic. So just okay. if you remember anything. Certainly. Well, certainly – I'm not the sort of medium who sees spirits in the, in the supermarket because I'm so disciplined, I just switch off. And the thing is, at the beginning, when those things happened, it would be when I was in a very relaxed state of mind, I'd just be sitting chatting to somebody or with a friend or somewhere, and I'd become aware of information flowing into my mind, and I would start to say, oh, don't know why, but I've just got to talk about this gentleman, and I feel I've got a gentleman, and his name is Jack, and I don't know why but I feel like I want to talk about your dad. What, what's going on? And, and so those little things happened, and then someone would say, oh, my gosh, that was my father called Jack who passed 10 years ago. Mm. And and then several uh, – there was two big incident, incidents that happened. There was several like that, and one of them was that I started looking into Buddhism, and I went to a Buddhist temple for some months to do meditation. And while sitting in meditation one day, I saw what I thought was my teacher – standing in front of me in a human image. I was sitting with my eyes closed and I thought, oh, my teacher must be standing right in front of me because he dressed in this beautiful robe. And it was such a strong image and this man looked down at me. And when he looked down at me, I didn't recognize the face. So I opened my eyes to find that my teacher was in the far corner of the room. And um, obviously I'd had a clairvoyant experience. And so that really intrigued me. And from then on, Little things happened, and then one day I was going to a wedding, and my girlfriend was getting married, and I was putting some lunch into the oven for my then husband, and as I did, all my oven lit up with colour, a uh, clairvoyant colour I was seeing, and I saw flames, and I heard the name of a lady, uh, a surname, and she said I was Mrs. Such and Such, and there will be no wedding photos today. There has been a fire, but all will be well. And I just thought, what? You know, and of course, I spoke to my husband and he raised his eyes and went, here we go again. Another one of your experiences. He was used to it. Right. So I go along to the wedding, dare not say anything to the bride, obviously. I just thought it was just nonsense, only to find out that my friend who was getting married came back to the reception late, 
tear stained and upset and they'd had to rush around to find another venue because where they had booked for the photographs for the wedding that day had burnt down to flames exactly the same time as I put the lunch in the oven. And I said to my husband, oh, my goodness, that's what I saw today. And he said, yes, it is. So I didn't say anything until a few weeks later. And I said, do you happen to know Mrs. Such and Such? She said, yes. Can you tell me about her? And all of a sudden the information flowed in. It had been her grandmother who'd been telling me. Wow. It was her, it was her grandmother. And my husband then said to me, Christine, you need to do something. You know, this is happening so often now. You need to do something with this. And it, it just went from there. And I would, I would have very psychic experiences where sometimes I would dream of things and the next day it would be on the news or in the newspaper. Um, so I had a lot of uh, prophecy and psychic prophecy coming to me that way. So that's when I knew I really had to start to study to understand because I didn't quite understand which was psychic, which was spirit. And that's very much a mix-up at the beginning of people's development. It was happening so naturally with me, I had to go to an experienced place to have people help me. Mm, and let's talk about that experienced place because I have been there now twice to the Arthur Finley College and um, many people don't know of its existence and I'm delighted mm -hmm. that I found it and you're a tutor there and maybe you just could share a little bit about what it is. Okay, okay. well, the, first of all, uh, in the introduction, the, the accreditation that I have, it, the, spirit, the CSNU, which is the certificate, um, so there are others in Australia who have that, but I'm the only accredited medium in Australia to actually teach at the Arthur Finley oh, College. Oh, gotcha. Sorry, yeah. I made that error. So that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. So, um, well, it, it's look, it's a wonderful place, and it's a place that was has been built up over many years with great standards of teaching, with great mediums. Um, a lot of the well-known, respected, old pioneers of our work, old mediums, worked there many, many years ago, who now passed to the the higher life. And today we have a range of very good mediums and teachers there. So it's a place people can go and they run weekly courses where there's different ranges of courses suitable for different people according to what they want to understand. There might be things about spirit portraiture, psychic art. There will be philosophy. There will be spirit communication and mediumship, which is the main thing. And so people come from all over the world to different courses and um, – as I say, different tutors are there, and it's where a place where people can go to fully understand their experiences or explore the understanding of the spirit world and the psychic sciences. Yeah, it's beautiful. So it, it is. It is a lovely place, and you no, know, I'm really quite privileged to be able to teach there. Mm. I'd I like to that. visit every year if I can, just for something. And you know, my first course was a beginner's course. I mean, it's it, and it is far for me being in the United States for you being in mm -hmm. Australia oh yeah but it, it, it is but it's worth it you know you go I, for I, a week like, oh. Well, oh, well yeah you go for a week and, and it, it I mean I, when I went as a student many many years ago I went several many years I used to do a, a week or two a year um just to get gain more understanding and exposure mm -hmm. because I couldn't get that in Australia unfortunately we don't have great high standards of teachers we only have a select few and so it was a great place for me to go to learn and understand and to see a varied group. But I was inspired very much by people like uh, Simon James, Brian Robertson, Mavis Spatilla, um, Paul Jacobs. Yes. You know, people, pe uh, people like that. Um, you know, I, I work with these people now and um, th I have great respect for the work that they do and how they teach. Um, and so... Um, I was lucky enough to be invited to become a tutor and after really intense several years of training, I then gained my accreditation and now I am invited to work on People's Weeks as a tutor, but I also um, will be running my own course next year. So now I'm now oh, a course organizer. Congratulations. We'll be looking forward yeah. to hearing about when that is. And yeah. that's fantastic. I know for me, you know, I was so afraid the first time I went there because, you know, mm -hmm. I really wanted to believe all this was possible, but oh, mm -hmm. it was hard to believe. And then to be surrounded, there was a hundred people in in the uh, college that week and we were practicing on each other. And it was just, mm -hmm. I, I felt a little bit like I was in Hogwarts from Harry Potter's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, because it was just like, are we, are we really learning what we're learning here? Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. Yeah. And, and to practice and feel safe and to be able to just play with it and, 
and just the most miraculous comforting things happen so I'm proud of you to go from being a student there to now being a tutor there it's really says a lot for who you are thank you yeah really great so what where do we go next to talk there's there's many things I know we can talk about but I always like to find out what your passion is and okay. you know you be able to share who you are and what what you are up to. I know we've got some friends in common. We've got uh Vic, Victor and Wendy Zamet who uh, I'd love to oh, include them they, in this they, conversation. Yes, they do because Victor and Wendy Zamet as you know they put an afterlife report out every Friday. They do a lot of research and have done for many many years and they're very supportive mm-hmm. of people in this field and um Part of it is to educate others and help give awareness to people. As they, I mean, their report goes out to millions around the world. So they do a great deal of work and research, and, and it's a lot to put a weekly report together. Yes. and it's very in- interesting as well because there's lots of interesting topics on there, you know, that are related to the psychic sciences, not just particularly communication with the spirit world. So it's a very informative site. Um, and the other thing is uh, the Banyan Retreat Centre in Kent, Ashford. I teach at Banyan quite regularly, and that is a fabulous centre, fabulous, run by uh, Nick Whittam and Stephen Sue. And as you know, there's many different tutors in different courses, and they have a very good reputation, and they aim for the highest standard of the people that they have work there. So we have courses run there annually as well, and they are great people. They also, you know, it's a holistic centre as well, so there's different modalities that they present but their workshops, their their presentations, they're also very much on the same wavelength as I and a few others about truth, truth in mediumship and truth about the spirit. And that's also something that Victor and Wendy, um, Nick and Stephen at Banyan, the tutors that I particularly work with at the college, it's about being truthful and about being real and keeping mediumship real because it's been so diluted over the years and people are adding things to what real mediumship is which actually don't belong to mediumship and so when we're talking about spirit communication you know unless someone provides you with evidence um, and if people want to go and learn you want to go and watch the teacher work listen to the teacher are they providing evidence that they can actually do what they're talking about or is it soap and bubbles and to be, you know, people who know me will tell you I'm not a love light and soap and bubbles girl. I'm a nuts and, I'm a nuts and bolts kid. Yes. So um, I need to work from the ground up and I need structure and understanding. So it, it's not good enough for me for someone to say I went and did a weekend workshop and now I'm a trans medium or now I'm a medium because true mediumship takes many years to develop. Though people can develop quite quickly, depending upon what they're doing, right? And it's an un- and it's an understanding of the self. So it's okay to learn the ability because mediumship is a faculty of the mind. So therefore, I don't believe it's a gift. I believe it is an ability that you can find home or um, attune to. But I do really believe that true mediums are naturally born, and I believe their work is easier and richer because of that ability. But I do believe everybody can learn to attune to the spirit world. But it's like everybody playing a piano. Not everybody's going to be Liberace. People have different levels. Yes. But I do believe I do believe the spirit world is for everybody in some way, but I don't believe everybody will be become a medium. Though they may have spontaneous experiences with the spirit world. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes a lot of sense. And I'm really glad that you bring this up because um, so many people say uh, you can be a psychic but not a medium and mediums are both psychic and medium and, and mediumship is a gift and there's this whole world. And I thought, you know, here's me who went looking for evidence who would be the last person on the planet that I would think would be either a piano player or a medium, <laughs> but uh, well, exactly. put under the right conditions with uh, having courage and the ability to play with it and take the coaching and a real loving intent to connect. Wow. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'm not a practicing medium, nor have I practiced. Uh, and So, you know, I I don't do medium readings and things like that, but I've dabbled in it enough to know this is the real deal. And Well, it is. It is a real deal. And it is exactly like you say. There will be varying levels 
of people's ability. Um, some people will be a greater psychic and they might be able to touch the spirit world and gain a little bit of information, but they, they might never develop or that ability might not be enriched or fine honed enough to be able to become a working medium. So it would be better to stay with the psychic side. But you do have to work on both levels to be a medium. You do have to understand the difference. And that's where there's a crossover. A lot of people believe a lot of psychic work is spirit and it's not. Um, a lot of people will believe that everything comes from the spirit world and it doesn't because we have so much information within our own souls and we are so capable with our own soul and our own mind of touching into great depths of others that we can actually relay that and a lot of people will label that as being from the spirit world. It's not. Every time there is spirit communication, there should be some form of evidence. Ah, and okay. that's what we look for. That's what we look for. Um, so I'm a great believer that it's not a gift. I think that's an old fashioned saying, say, oh, your ability is a gift. I think it's an art. I think it's a skill. And I think it's something that you need to fine tune and develop and work with. To what level you become with that development is the work you're going to put in. And if it's meant to be on your journey in your pathway. So it's not everybody's cup of tea. And it, it's hard work. It's, it's not easy. You've got to work to maintain and build a bridge with the other world. But I don't believe that people are just picked and chosen. I believe that opportunity is there for everybody, but to where they go with it and how it develops around and with them and in their life is another thing. Mm, Christine, I'm just thinking my dad had an expression, the harder you work, the luckier you get. And so many people would think, oh, he's lucky because of this or that. And um, yeah, people that are looked upon as lucky and they work darn hard and and same thing oh you've got the gift of mediumship well how about i've given my whole life to it <laughs> oh, well exactly it's, so it's like look you know it's ex exactly like you say and for myself uh, i had these experiences but had i have not gone and sought i also studied parapsychology for four years and had i not sought the understanding and the um education behind what I was doing, I wouldn't be where I am today. And even today, I have to still work with my people in the spirit world and with myself. I, don't, I can't sit down and just take it for granted. I've got to constantly develop and understand. And the more I've done it, it's actually coming up 26 years now. Wow. And the more, I've, the more I've done it, the more I understand that in the beginning, I worked very psychically. I worked very much on a psychic level. And mediumship works through the mind, not from the mind, meaning that if you're really in true communication with the spirit world, the information would flow very naturally. And when it's from the mind, it's when people are grasping and grabbing information and bits and pieces, which can be around as thought forms or aspects of memories in the auric field of somebody that you can pick up psychically. Christine? You know, it, it, it's very interesting. Don't mean to interrupt, but uh, would you explain the difference between psychic and medium? Just so I'd love to talk more about this, but I just don't want to be lost. Yeah, okay. like what's what the okay. heck is the difference? Well, the thing is, a psychic is very think about things on the material level. So, a psychic, if somebody came to me um, and they wanted to know uh, about their life, about their job, about their family. Their, their employment, their hobbies, their passions or where they are in their life, I would be reading the auric field of them and the soul of them okay. without any interference from the world of the spirit. Now, if I do that, which is which I do both within my work and my consultations, if I do that, I will start that and that will happen. I'll tell them about their life, perhaps give them guidance. And everything I see with them, especially and this is very important and I say this to all my clients is, Anything any medium or psychic gives you on a material level, on a psychic level, also remember their probabilities, their possibilities and opportunities because everybody has free will. So you can change things. And oh, then if you okay. could do... Good. So right, no one knows the future. This is the way it's going to be. 
you're going to meet this man Friday <laughs> next year. You're going to get married on well, November 11th. Boom, 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 boom. You, cer- you certainly can pick all those things up. We can certainly have right. premonition and precognition, which all belong to the psychic side of, of the right. understanding of education. And I'm trying to keep this very simple for you without getting too deep. That's but right. it, that, that belongs to the psychic side okay. of understanding. So it's quite common to know those things. It's quite common to see those things. But they're all the still probability and possibility until the actuality of it happening. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then so you could be doing that with someone in front of you and then all of a sudden you become aware of a shift in energy and then you become aware of someone with you. So I may become aware of a mom or a brother or someone they have lost. And in order for that to be real, I then will, I when I work, I wait for the information to flow me. I feel with them, the person beside me, and I wait for the information to flow to me. I might see images. I might hear words. And what I then do is have the feeling that I need to interpret that story. So, for instance, I could say, oh, I'm very aware of a young man here. I believe this is a brother. I believe you have a brother in the spirit world. Um, and I believe this, this is how he passed. And then I would go on to relay memories of his life and information about him to verify his existence. And so, therefore, I'm giving a form of evidence to my client of their loved one in the spirit world because how else would I know that? But the, 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 the difference is that as a medium, I know the feeling between knowing he's really there than other than just picking up that as a memory from the client's auric field. So you can tell the difference. Uh, if you're sitting in the power and you work with the power of the spirit, truly in your development and your relationship with the spirit world is correct, you should be able to feel that presence of someone there. And your recipient should be moved and you would feel movement within yourself. It's, it's, it is what we call in the blending with the other world. We blend with the other world. And it happens very naturally. So it's not like bang, crash, <laughs> oh, there's someone here, oh, there's someone here from the spirit world. It's a very gentle, subtle shift of consciousness where there's another consciousness touching yours with different information. This is all very exciting. And, I, and I've taken a couple of courses at the Arthur Finley College, so I understand. And I'm, I'm excited that you're sharing it in language that I maybe haven't been able to share. And also, um, I know out in the world, there's many, many people that call themselves psychics and mediums. And I've even mm-hmm. had people write to me that have been frustrated because it's like they've, you know, some people charge a lot of money and they and there's a lot of people that are grieving quite heavily and they really want <laughs> proof. And and I'm sure there might be something to an energetic level. And maybe you can talk about that. Maybe you can't get to all people. But I also believe that there are some people that maybe aren't authentic in, in, um, in their practice. They may yeah. be more about the money than helping people. And Well, there, there is. There is, a, yeah. there is that. Of course there is. It's like in any organization or any any sort of form of employment, there's always that sort of aspect there, that, and ours is no different. Um, I think for myself, I mean, of course I do a little bit of advertising. I have my website, Facebook page, et cetera, sure. and wherever I'm being hosted around the world, um, like I say, the college, um, Banyan, and also the Open Door Spiritualist Sanctuary, which is a fabulous place in Victoria, B.C., Canada, um, where I go. In, which is a fabulous spiritualist center, um, you know, places like that, the authenticity uh, stands out. And for yeah. places where I work in Australia, the people that I work with, it's authentic. And I know them and I've watched and seen how they operate and how they work. But the problem we have around the world, um, and I think Australia seems to follow America because there's it, it, a lot of similarities between the American trends and Australian trends is that people get into trends of things you know mediumship has not changed since days of old mediumship is an ancient art it's been going on for eons of years spiritualism became rational you know um, years ago in 1848 with the Fox sisters but it was going on long before that and so when you really research the art and history of it you see it's a natural phenomena which has belonged to many different cultures but expressed in many different ways. 
this sadly uh, people seem to go along to a course get excited they get a little bit of information and then they run with it without doing the background education and that's when things fall down so our work can become very diluted by psychic fears great big expos which are fabulous to bring awareness to people yes um but you know we are not a market trade art what we do i believe this is my opinion and i must express this i believe it's a sacred art and i believe your relationship with the with the spirit world is sacred and i believe it's a personal thing i don't believe we belong in market stalls and little shops um doing readings behind counters and that, i don't mean any offense to anybody but i believe that you have to be in saying that i believe that you have to be right with what you're doing but not for it to become so commercialized that it's it actually becomes so common for people that the richness of the education becomes so diluted and so this is what's happened and now i know lovely people who are very capable of doing good readings who work in little stores or do big ex- exhibitions and that sort of thing and that's all great for experience but it, true mediumship is about a soul to soul connection and i also know lots of wonderful wonderful mediums that work quietly at home with healing and with private readings helping people in grief and they don't seek the limelight i and it doesn't matter if people are in the limelight or not i don't have an issue whether they are or not um all i have an issue with is that i hope also everybody's always truthful and i think if you look for the truth in everything the spirit world know that and they recognize that sandra yeah. and so sometimes you know i will say no i don't do the soap and bubbles love light and fluff because i believe that well i believe everybody comes comes into this life full of love anyway right so i don't think we need to give love light and blessings to everybody all the time because we we naturally if we have an awareness of self we have an awareness of gratitude of what we are and who we are on a daily basis or at least we try to and I- I would love Christine to talk a little bit about the self because I know people have reached out to me that they it, and it comes from a desire to reach out to their loved ones and they think is it possible to learn mediumship for their own growth not to hang up a shingle and you know for the purpose of mm-hmm. it had new career change but really right. like even for myself the first weekend course i took in mediumship was not at the arthur friendly college it was here in the states and i had 3 days short days of practicing and it was amazing what i experienced but at the end of the weekend mm-hmm. she gave me a certificate that now i am a certified medium and i can go now and and do mediumship mm-hmm. readings for money and i thought there's no way i'm going to do that yeah, and so while i don't agree with it what it did do is it it opened the door for me to explore more and really? and, and that was great but now i know there's people cuz i've gotten plenty of emails and messages that uh, you know they they are interested in mediumship is there a way i know we talked about this a little bit before we re- started the recording um but how would you direct people to get started if they're interested and also if you could talk about you know self awareness being part of it because i don't think we all really get who we are as souls i agree with you um well first of all if you're going to you want to go and learn you need to go and look for someone with credibility so you want to go and watch them work you want to listen to them and i would say to people research a few different at uh, teaching organizations or where there's qualified tutors or people who have um a background of education and understanding i certainly don't agree with people doing courses for 3 or 4 weeks and giving out certificates and i don't think you can give a certificate to become a medium i think that's crazy i think you can have a certificate in accreditation um like we have with the college of understanding the education and then you have to be passed before a panel and a board to be able to prove that that you're doing what you're saying you can so that's where accreditation comes in um with the understanding i think that what you need to do if you really want to learn about mediumship is that you go and look and search for the correct courses with the right people and of course you never know it like your own experience at the beginning if they are so you need to do your homework correctly um and you have to also understand that 
it is a journey of unfoldment. So it will bring up the dark sides of your soul as well as the light sides. It will make you look at yourself. If you're really, really honest, it will make you look at yourself um, and your life in many different ways. And it does change you. Um, I believe it does change you to a degree because when we understand the truth about the spirit world, there's a mantle of responsibility that's placed around us. You can't think that you can communicate with the other world and speak of lo loved ones in the spirit for other people and not think that the spirit world know about your life. So it's no use endeavoring to be the great medium and bring great communication for somebody, but then being a, a terrible person on a personal level outside of it. Yes. And, you know, that can happen. And it does happen. It does happen, uh, sadly. But I believe that if you have an awareness of self, you also then have an awareness of the teachings of the spirit because the teachings of the spirit, and I say to my clients, you do realize when your loved one's coming and they, they want to be remembered, I've given you evidence and they're bringing you love. But what they're really doing is letting you know that consciousness survives, that this is, this is not so much proof because I don't believe we can give proof. My words are I offer evidence of that proof. You go and do the homework. You go and do the research. But they're actually letting you know they're still alive, that there is a higher realm. There is somewhere else we go where we meet up again and reunited. So they're giving you food for thought. So as well as the communication in being remembered with love, if people really think about it, then it opens a doorway in their mind of intrigue, of uh, interest, to maybe look at the other world and to find out, oh, what does happen when you die? How come all these people are doing this? What's going on? So I think there's a lesson for everybody in this sort of thing. And the interesting thing is it's quite wonderful when we get people who communicate. I just had a client yesterday and uh, her father c communicated and um, her grandfather rather, and she said he would not have believed this. And I said, absolutely. And he said, no, he would never have believed. He would have laughed at someone like myself. Uh, but his communication was beautiful. And because he in the spirit world is learning and progressing as well. Yeah, I, and that's, I, it's very important to understand that. My course uh, last month, Simone Key was the tutor. And I, I really oh. remember, I don't know exactly how she said it, but uh, you don't need to push this on people. I mean, people, if they're interested, they'll, they'll find you. Um, that's right. and, and people, if they're not interested and they don't believe that there's anything after death, that's fine. Cause they'll find out there is, you know, it's just, it was just it's so matter of fact that in their time, it is. they'll find out it's it real. Is. Yes. I know Simon quite well. And yes, that's absolutely right. They will find out. And it is, it is up to them because it's a soul's progression. So that's why we can't control things. And even as a medium, whether when we can work with the other world or as a psychic when we work with people here, we can't control life for people. People have free will. As I said, you can have a wonderful reading with a psychic and they could give you great predictions, but you can change that through free will. And the spirit world are not allowed to interfere with free will because they can't control your life. So, you know, people come to me and they want to say, well, I want to know about my, my mom or my grandmother in the spirit world. I need to sell my house. What do they think? I say nothing. Go and see a real estate agent. <laughs> why would you, you wouldn't ask your grandmother advice on your relationships when she was here. So why would you do it now when she's in the spirit world? She may acknowledge this relationship or know there's a wedding or etc. But they're not going to advise you on those things where you have to make your personal decisions because they're your things in your life that you have to learn and live through your experiences. And that comes with understanding. And it's exactly like how Simone said. You know, they don't believe, they don't believe. It's not everybody's cup of tea. They'll find out that they can. But then again, not everybody wants to communicate. And we can't demand that. We can't demand those people. So I just say to my clients, look, I'm open. You're open. I never ask who they want to communicate with. I let them, the spirit world, do that. Because I believe in that higher design of intelligence, they know what to do. The spirit world know they've got to bring evidence and they will know who wants to communicate. Mm, it's so good. I leave that to the other world. Good that you say you know, some people don't want to communicate because I, I know people that are frustrated because they've never gotten a message or a sign from mm -hmm. their father or something. And and think many people think just because we go into 
the afterlife, we become these really wise souls that have all the answers. <laughs> but are we no. just still us? No. Yes, we are just still us. We are with us with our own memories of experiences of life that we would impart back to our loved ones here if we were to work through a medium, but also in the spirit world. And you have to remember that none of us have gone up to the spirit world for a couple of days, checked it out and come back. So everything that we know of the spirit world is based on uh, theoretical information that we are given through um, great trans mediumship, through continued research. Um, but we may get there and find out it's very different to what we think. And so I believe that when we get to the spirit world, that the soul has the opportunity to progress, no matter how their life was here. So there will be changes for that soul in the spirit world, dependent upon what level of progression they are at and where they want to go to. Um, often we know and believe that our immediate family wait for us till we are all reunited. But that does not mean that your grandmother or um, like my grandfather and my grandmother and now my father who's passed and my brother who's passed were all mediums. I mean, they may be working with other people. They may be helping other others as well as myself. So I have no control of that. And I believe that um, that is up to that soul when they get to the other side. Oh, that's great. That's great. It's a, it's, you know, it's an int a very interesting concept, and it's rather, rather wonderful. And I've, I, I remember a very strong experience, Sandra, that I would share with you is that when my brother passed, which absolutely devastated me sure. eight years ago, he was a wonderful medium. Um, he didn't work professionally, but he was fabulous. And he's a very, very sensitive soul. And I have, I have a lot of experiences where he's been around me. And I remember just a few weeks after his passing, he came back to me and he said, it's not like you think it is. Hmm. And it was so strong. I sat bolt upright in bed. I'd just been falling off to sleep and seen his face and heard those words in my head. And I went, oh, my gosh. He was trying to let me know. It is a little bit different. So I don't know. I believe it is a place of love and joy and understanding. But I also believe it must be a place of learning for us as well. Yes. What what are your is your opinion about why we're here? I mean, are we souls having a human experience to learn? I mean, do you have any idea what ultimately Ooh, we're here big, for? Biggie, isn't it? That's a big one. Oh, well, I might you as well know, go for the big one. Yeah, why that's not? what we go do. Yeah, go for the big one. Well, personally, and as I said, everything in this conversation is my own personal of opinion. Course. Is the fact through my own experiences. Um, I don't believe this theory that that this life here is a school of lessons. I don't believe, I don't buy into that. I just believe that this is general life. I believe that lessons come to us through our own experiences of what we experience in our life. But I don't believe that it's a school we have to come to, to go through, to gain understanding. I, you know, you have people say, oh, well, this happened to you because that's your life's lesson or you did this in a past life or you did that. I'm not quite sure if I really agree with that. I believe that we are born into this world and I believe that this world's actually full of joy, but we sometimes, you know, the old saying, misery loves company. Yes. We sometimes tend to focus on the misery and the sad things in the world rather than the joyful things. So I believe it isn't just, you know, it's not a school of hard knocks or a school of lessons. I believe actually it's a place of experience and that's how I would say it. So people say, well, you know, earth is a school of lessons. And I say, no, I don't think it is. I feel it's a place of experiences. And those experiences are called life. Very good. And, that's just, and that is just what it is. Mm -hmm. It is a place of experience. One day it's ordinary, mundane. The next day it could be amazing. So that is ordinary, everyday life that everybody lives. And I don't believe we have situations where people are you know ill or have terrible times in their lives that they've chosen that or someone has impinged that upon them i believe it's just life and experiences happen to people that's how it is yeah there's so many different things people say on this show and mm -hmm. it's interesting because i i know for myself and even the advice i give is to take what resonates with yourself and it empowers yourself uh, yeah. uh and I, I agree a place of experiences and, and that, but I think 
personally we learn from them and there's there's yes. growth for our soul that's what i believe you know and uh and that oh, empowers me that. yeah i i agree with that that you take what it what that experience gives you personally it, you 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 learn from that on a personal level um from that experience but I don't, when I say a school of lessons, I don't sort of say it's a place that you have to have a school of hard lessons yes. or this happens to be a school of that because I think there's so much joy in the world that we forget to look at. We forget about every day, the beauty of animals, the beauty of nature. Oh, yeah. the, very, yeah. the very fact that every night sometimes we can look up at the stars or we have a beautiful full moon or a beautiful sunrise or sunset or just sometimes simplistic things like the beauty of people being together, community. We forget about those things. So it's a place of experiences and you take your lessons as an individual from whatever life gives you. But I don't believe it's like you have to run through this school um, to learn. I believe you're here to live it, to live the experiences and gain what you can. Beautiful. Whatever works for you. Whatever yeah. works for you. Can we talk a little yeah. bit, Christine, about um, whether you call it meditation or quieting the mind? I know there's something available for all of us, even if we don't run off to find a school in mediumship. Um, but uh, can you talk a little bit about a connection maybe we can make with our own um, soul? Yeah. Well, well, I believe that, you know, one of the things that we, we teach in self-awareness before we step into working with the spirit world is how to be quiet with the self because we all have monkey minds. We all have that constant chatter. And it's about understanding the discipline and focus that's needed to just be quiet and you're never going to stop thought because the brain is um, made up of that complexities of having to survive and having to keep you going on a day-to-day -day basis because that's the organ, that's how it is. And so in the physicality, we are geared up to survive every day. So you can't quieten thought because thought is who you are and what you are. So in that state what the best thing to do is to simply practice at the beginning being quiet, no noise, no interruptions, just sit in silence. How do you feel? How does your body feel to you today? How does your mind feel to you today? Where are you emotionally today? And sit and don't be afraid of what comes up to you. Don't be afraid of those feelings. And I would say journalize them. And then gradually over a period of time, as you start to become aware of self and aware of your own energy, you start to understand how things affect you, actions, reactions. And then from that, we move into a place of a more of a meditative state where our consciousness becomes a little bit quieter. And so we then become more receptive. And for example, at the beginning, you sit somewhere silent and you may just be very, very aware of the noise of the wind or the noise of one bird or, you know, it could be the ocean. It could be anything that appeals to you. And you savor those moments. So you block out all that monkey mind chatter and you focus on those moments. From then, we can then move into what we call understanding the power of self and the power linking that with the spirit power. So you need to go into that silent state to go inward so your own spirit and your own soul is quiet and understands itself. And in that silence, if we are receptive to things around us without the monkey brain going chat, 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 we actually can become receptive to the other influences of the other world. And so it takes time and discipline. It's not easy. And so if you discipline yourself and give yourself time, over a period of time, your receptivity to the silence, which actually speaks to us if we listen, we will become receptive to other things other than the noise of everyday life. And I believe that level of self-awareness is so important with the spirit world, so important. Yeah, it's the, it's the gateway to, I think, all of it. It is. I know it from myself, I, last week, uh, I was sitting outside and I, you know, the best description I had for that peaceful place that I went is if you can imagine having a backpack on and it weighs, I don't know, 100 pounds, super heavy. And then the relief when it comes off. Well, I hit that place where 
I finally, the mind chatter, the monkey mind stopped and I was just at peace. I just felt the sun mm -hmm. shining and it, it really felt like a hundred pounds came off my brain. Yeah. It was yeah. so wonderful. That's it. That's what I'm saying. And if we use that and we savor those moments and remember those experiences, we can build upon those experiences to actually then start to build the energy level and power around us so we, we become susceptible to the other influences of the other world. And that's what it's about, receptivity. And this is what we talk about when we say about the blending with the other world, if we give our times to blend. I'm a great believer that when we are in true communion with the spirit world, the information just flows through the mind. If the mind has to constantly search and grab and snatch for information, we're not holding the communicator correctly or we're not in the power properly and our, our consciousness is interfering. So that's one of the things that mediums today we have to master. And when we teach, um, we have to learn to master that and teach our students to master that. And it, it, that's the art form. But if you're receptive in those moments to allow that information to flow, you don't need to have look for evidence because the spirit world will bring it naturally. So you then, for me, I would say to people, build a relationship with the spirit world when you first start. You know, here I am, dear spirit, wishing to be of service. I want to join a group or I'm sitting in a circle. I want to be of service. Allow me, myself, allow myself to be silent, to be receptive to your world and it takes time i mean i sat for many years quietly for 30 to 45 minutes every morning every morning for many years i would sit quietly in my lounge room and i had the most wonderful experiences of the spirit world and i believe that was the foundation all those years ago of me building my relationship with my friends in the spirit and i know when they're with me now but it, when I'm aware of people, I'm actually very aware of people with me now as I'm talking to you. But I don't have that need to, who are you? What are you doing? Who do you belong to? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Because I'm so, part of me, because I'm talking about that other world, which is a world of thought, because I'm talking about that, my mind is half open to that. Does that make sense, Sandra? It does. And so I'm aware and receptive to the change in my room as I'm sitting talking to you, which is my consultation room, that there is a change. So I know the spirit world of presence. There's the presence of the spirit world, but they don't necessarily have to have a personality to bring through evidence. And that's where people get mixed up as well. You can have the presence of the power of the spirit, but not necessarily personality with it. Hmm. And that comes through education and understanding. So it's relinquish the need to know everything about them and who it is all the time. Until you start to understand your relationship with yourself and with the spirit. You know, sitting and developing the power and developing the sit in the silence and your relationship is true development. Communication of messages and information is the result of that development. Ah, very good. Our time's going by very quickly, as it always does. I didn't yeah. want to forget to ask, do we each have a spirit team around us that when we quiet our mind that we have uh, loved um, ones around? Yes, well, I believe that your loved ones are around you. I don't believe they're hanging around you all the time. I certainly don't believe that they know everything about you and read all your thoughts and interfere with your daily life because they that's intrusion hallelujah that. yeah <laughs> yeah hallelujah we say i don't believe in that but I, uh, I believe that if you are working in the field of service to humanity mm -hmm. that you certainly may have other minds in the spirit world that inspire you and help you in some way i don't believe that everybody who um is not interested in mediumship has a team either i believe their loved ones are around but i believe that you've got to understand that your loved ones around to be remembered, to prove that and offer evidence of the ongoing life of consciousness. Right. But when you're working in the field of service with the other world, then you are going to attract minds that are higher than your loved ones and family in progression. Does that make sense? It does. But can it be in so, any kind of service? I mean, it's 
I'm just what I guess the answer I'm looking to see if you're going to give or not is if we have spirit guides that work with us or that are around with the different. Uh, well, I, I do believe that they are, but I don't believe that spirit guides are around everybody all the time, right. especially if they're not if they're not working in the field. I mean, if you're not working as a medium and you're not interested, blah blah. So you you wouldn't have a team of higher evolved minds from the spirit world wanting to inspire you, right? Unless unless you were going to be of service in some sort. But you would still have your loved ones around you who want to guide and love and support you. Does that make sense? It sure does, yeah. Because it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Why would, why would a highly, uh, someone who's got a higher mind, uh, a little bit of an evolved soul, come to work with someone who's not interested in the spirit world when they could be giving service to maybe another person who is interested in the spirit world and going to be of service to humanity in that way? So I'm, I'm, I'm re- there's a lot of different theories about this, but I'm really on the fence because I really don't believe that everybody has a team of highly evolved minds. I believe that once you start to open the door to understanding, maybe wishing to know about the other world, you then may attract higher minds that you may call your guides or influences from the spirit world to work with you because it's about service. What's the expression the teacher what is it? This when the student is ready, the teacher appears. When the student is ready, the teacher comes. But the teacher always, I say to my own students, the teacher always um, is an inspirer because we can't teach mediumship. We can open the door to understanding, um, education, and learning, but we can't teach you to be a medium because it's an unfoldment of your own soul, your own journey. We can only give you guidelines and the understanding as the best of our own experiences. And I feel any good teacher would always be learning and looking and researching. And it's not that you have to come up with new things with mediumship because mediumship hasn't changed. We've changed it. And we know more today than we've known for years. So it's, a very, it's very interesting about the complexities and the, cons- the constructs of the human mind. And once you start to dabble into that, you start to understand the real differences between the psychic and the spirit. It's a good journey though. I know for me, I have no idea where it's going. I just know that I'm willing. uh, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm open. I've asked Mm -hmm. to be of service and the best people have been showing up in my life, including yourself and many, many listeners who are interested. So I, I just keep saying yes. And I, I think, you know, I've got a, I, I do think I have a team working with me. And here, let's put this sure one in Sandra's path. Let's let's do this. Let's yeah. do that. Uh, Christine, sure you do. do you have any closing words or, or time or anything I didn't ask you that I should have? Anything that you want to share? Because I'm just, um, how did an hour go by so fast? I don't know. I know. I know. How wonderful. Yeah. But, you know, n- no, not really uh, anything major. The only thing is that I say, you know, this is, this is a wonderful journey of unfoldment. But be prepared to understand the involvement of the self Yes, that you're going to learn about yourself. And the more you learn about yourself, the more you learn about your relationship with the spirit world. And it's, it's not something that's done overnight. It isn't just a quick fix job. It's a journey. But it's also it's about humanity. And it's about serving. And it's about understanding why they communicate. They help. They communicate to help us understand our life here. And they say to us, don't disregard your life here. It is as important as the spirit world. Living your life here with family and community and loving people and understanding people, understanding about empathy and compassion and giving. I'm a great believer that um, it's a humanitarian line of work. I don't believe it's easy, but I believe that for myself not to do it, my soul would be bereft. I, I really would be bereft. But I feel that if anybody out there really wants to understand, look for good education, do some reading and research, question and challenge your teachers, um, you know, get them to show you what they can do, gain for understanding. But always, always at the end of the day, remember this is about you and your relationship with God, which is a spirit world, the source, the power of everything that sustains us. Wow, Christine, thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Sandra. It's been a delight. Oh, me, I'm just so happy. I, I've had several interviews today and I'm just left just so inspired. And it's I just want to. Ma- Topic. Yeah, I just want to give a couple links from what we said earlier. We talked about Victor and Wendy Zamet. VictorZamet.com is a website you can go to and sign up for their Friday Afterlife Report. And every week they deliver to many, many, many people so much great reading on evidence of the afterlife. Really great. And then we also talked about uh, Banyan Retreat center and if you go to banyanretreat.com i know that's one of the ways to get there in fact i'll be there this november for something called voices of the past which is just spectacular which i invite you to and at the end of this week i'll be talking to um, nick from banyan and scott milligan who's a physical medium there so be on the lookout for those episodes so we have been talking to the wonderful christine morgan and her website is christinemorgan.com.au for our listener, I invite you to come September uh, to to meet me at the Afterlife Symposium. That'll be a lot of fun. Afterlifestudies.org. Uh, you can go to we don't die radio.com. There's over 180 episodes of great guests, and you can see who we've talked to and listened to all kinds of different episodes. And I want to invite you to, to click on the Insiders Club because I'll give you a free PDF copy of my book and also a very healing audio called How to Survive Grief. And lastly, if these episodes make a difference for you, uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but um, I I support this show on my own. I don't have any commercials as you know so it all comes out of my pocket having this uh these interviews available for you and i know there's been a few people that have generously sent me a few dollars just to say thank you and please know it goes into a good cause to get these episodes out if you are someone who'd like to make a donation i gladly accept Uh, and you can go to paypal.me slash sandra champlain but don't feel like you must but if it's something you feel like you'd like to do i I invite you to that and also we have a facebook group type in we don't die listeners into the search box and become part of that so in closing my name is sandra champlain and i have been your host on we don't die radio and i do believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here on earth is important so i really want to thank you for listening and we'll see you soon Mm -hmm.